Hello and welcome again to this edition of Capital Dateline. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We're coming to you just a few blocks from Florida's capital from the headquarters of the Florida Cable Telecommunications Association. When most people think of Florida's industry leaders, theme parks, tourist attractions, and world-class golf courses often come to mind. But there's another homegrown national leader in the Sunshine State that reaches millions of homes across America. If you've ever watched television or shopped online, you've probably heard of it. I'm talking about HSN, America's first national shopping network, founded as a local shopping television channel in Pinellas County, Florida in 1977. HSN has exploded into a multi-billion dollar retailer, broadcast innovation leader, and economic powerhouse in the Sunshine State. With innovations in its DNA, HSN is no stranger to revolutionizing the way consumers shop and interact with retailers and remains a valued partner to the internet and television industry. Whether on television, online, or via mobile phone, HSN has found a way to deliver a robust shopping experience across multiple platforms, tailored to shoppers' individual preference. We recently toured and visited HSN's St. Petersburg campus to find out more about these and many other innovations coming from the online and television retailer and what's next in the evolving industry. Jen Cotter, Executive Vice President of TV, Content and Programming at HSN, gave us a tour of its St. Petersburg headquarters and shared how HSN is leading the charge in reshaping the way shoppers and retailers interact online and on television. Well, Jen, thank you so much for showing us around HSN. It's such a privilege to be here. What an amazing operation that you have here. Thank you very much. We're privileged to have you. Well, look, you are the leader of this operation when it comes to content production, where you're going in the marketplace. Talk to us a little bit about how HSN is, is creating content and product for the new viewer. The new viewer watches it on an iPad. They do it on their phone. They're also consuming it on their TV. How are you guys adjusting? What are you doing? We do so many things. We, um, we're really one of the only broadcasters that have live stream on mobile, digital, and our broadcast networks all mm -hmm. day, every day. So we really want to be where our customer is, wherever she is. We also have about 10 channels of distribution. I think people think of us predominantly as the HSN main channel, which is very important to us. But separately, we have HSN2, which is a best of channel. We have a, you know, a constant stream of new content on digital and mobile, mm -hmm. and it's meant to enhance that story that we're telling on air for our customer. Mm -hmm. And so we really want to evolve with her and just really be wherever she is. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about her and she, and, and, and you are referring to what I assume is your customer. Why do you call your customer a her? And uh, tell us a little bit about what that customer looks like. It's funny, it's a little bit of a habit because we certainly have a lot of men that shop here, mm -hmm. uh, but predominantly we are, uh, you know, our customers have just historically been female. It's partially the storytelling, I think. Women love shopping. Mm -hmm. They love the story of a product. So what? If News you, flash. Yeah, right, it's right, true. Right, right. This is fact. Um, <laughs> so when you want to compliment a woman's purse, she doesn't generally, a true shopper doesn't just say thank you. Mm -hmm. She gives you the whole life story of that <laughs> purse and how it was a limited edition and this is the designer mm -hmm. and we offer her that information. And that's right. always been what makes us unique. Right. And so that's why we call her her. Thank God there's a lot of them out there and mm -hmm. they, you know, continually to find us on new channels. And again, back to our multi-channel initiative, that's part of why we want our digital experience or our mobile experience to sort of have that same life right. and information, education and product that we do on the live show. So it's not just one age demographic, for example. I mean, I mean you probably have a, a, a number one, but but how big or how small we do. We, is have, that a, age um, we have a target, of course. Right. You know, we have um, women about 45 tend to really love what we do. It's for a number of reasons, um, and that's a range. I know I'm targeting 45, mm -hmm. but you know it depends on where they are in their life. While they're at car line, if they want to grab their phone and scroll through a couple like cool necklaces and buy one, right. or whether they have 20 minutes after their kids go to bed and they don't mind hearing a host tell them about a new designer or right. trend, they love us then, and then they stay with us. So we do have a large range. Our mobile shopper tends to start younger. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've zeroed in on, we think it's when they start making big life decisions like marriage, buying homes, where they really want the curation we offer and we can help them sort of set up the life they want and then they stay with us for everything else. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, well let's talk a little bit about the product launch because mm -hmm. most of those products that you're referring to ha need broadband and they need hookups in the home. How are you seeing your customers using that network, are they still all calling in to buy their products or are they doing it online? How does How is that working you these know, days? We're unique because our customer loves being a part of our community. So she calls into our, our live broadcast. She al always has. Mm -hmm. We were sort of the first social media organization because you could call in live, give feedback on the air. We love when she sort of accesses us online. 
and she's evolving. You know, every consumer is evolving, but our customer is now, you know, no longer really cares about watching it on TV as much as she used to. Right. But she still wants to be as part of our community, so we have to adapt. Our shell, our cells on air get, are getting a little shorter mm -hmm. because she wants to check it out, see if she likes it. She wants to see what's coming up next. And then she runs out to work and she might watch it on her mobile phone or yeah. on her desktop at work. So we want to be wherever, whenever she's watching. And, um, and that's sort of our commitment to our customer. Yeah. As we looked at some of the technologies that you guys are now filming and photographing for, uh, we had discussed earlier a little bit about how you're using social media to, to be the add-on, if you will, to your existing broadcast. How are you finding your production experience that you're already using translating into quality that you're pushing through social? Yeah, we have, we've done the tour. So you mm -hmm. see at any given time, we have over 100 really amazing professionals in production here, and they love what they do. Mm -hmm. It's also a great opportunity that we have Facebook, YouTube coming down and do trainings to show our great staff how to evolve and do content for digital. Mm -hmm. So we have amazing partnerships with every organization out there that's broadcasting content different than us, and we're evolving our training. We're about to, we're about to launch a mobile studio in August, and that's not a moving studio, that's like right. mobile first. We're gonna do 30 second clips of every product we right. sell, and, um, and our team will do it. Our team will evolve their skill set to do that kind of content. The hope is that we become the predominant, or we remain the predominant content-driven retailer, but we also wanna create a great environment for our employees. I, don't, I hate when employees leave HSM, but if they do and they go work for Facebook, that's great. Right. Or BuzzFeed or any of these places that hire our employees every day because right. of what we do. Well, well so, so that's really amazing because you also talked about the translation of where HSN was 10, 10, 15 years ago versus now the structure of your staff is really kind of identical to what studios use for your, your, your production assistants, PAs, yeah. all the way up to your producers. I mean, I think, I, I think that story is pretty, pretty interesting. Could you share a little bit about that evolution that you've brought to HSN? Yeah, well, you know, we are a studio. We're a nine studio facility. And the way we treat our studios, we have a prop house off campus. We call this unit that you toured HSN Studios. Mm -hmm. And mostly because it used to just be the live show. And now at any given time, we're shooting two, three, four different things from promotions mm -hmm. for a brand to a quick like how to of Wolfgang Puck making macaroni and cheese down in our you know content studio. I'll come back for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's actually usually in the hallways. It's very hard to resist. Right. Um, but yeah, it's really that's what we have to do to evolve. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about what's happening is that one, I think you mentioned this earlier, People thought it would be great to go out and hire other people to make their content quickly. That's very expensive. We have an amazing expertise here. It's one of the things that differentiates us as a retailer. It's really the thing is the trust that our customer has in our product, mm -hmm. the quality of our product, and the fact that we tell her the story through video and content, and we always have. And so we really want to keep moving forward with that. Right. Well, so, so as a traditional retailer in that sense, you're testing products, you're making sure they're good. Quality is, is key in any, in any uh, retail store that you would walk into. Now, this store, people buy it differently. Right. But let's talk about the people that tell that story. You mentioned the 100 creatives that you have working here. Yeah. They are influencing, the from an economic standpoint, the community that is around HSN. Tell us a little bit about how who those people are, how do you get them, how do yeah. they come to work here, and then what do they push back into the community? Yeah, you know, we have, it's funny, when you think about the impact HSN has on this Florida Tampa Bay market, we are a huge re employer, we have an amazing culture, we, I referred to it earlier, we call it the culture of generosity, and we treat each other with a high level of respect, we attract great people, but in this market that's hard, you know, right. especially if you're a New Yorker like myself, who's relocating to Tampa, Florida. So the idea that we get these great creative talent, we keep them, and the impact, to your point, that they have on our local market. So, for example, there's probably five film festivals in the St. Petersburg area. I think at least three of them our staff started, and the other two they participate in. Mm -hmm. There's a new arts um, event downtown in St. Petersburg called El Cultura, and our team started it. And it was a multi-stop tour of arts and entertainment and music that our team did like as a part-time job when they were off their shift at HSN. And you don't think about the impact that an organization can have on a market, but when you have creative talent that's starting families here and wanting to be rooted here, mm -hmm. and that's important to them, it really changes an area. I mean, I've seen it change in my 12 years here. Yeah. Well, so, so, so when we think about production and content creation uh, on a national level with a national preeminent brand, 
you know, the, the, the amazing thing is, is that when people think about Florida, they think about beaches, they think about, you know, our theme parks, which are amazing, but they don't realize that you've got some of the most globally large Hispanic broadcasting brands in mm -hmm. South Florida. You've got the Golf Channel in Central Florida, and here you have the organization that essentially started the 24 hours, you know, 24 seven broadcasting industry. right here in St. Petersburg, and you're here today. Yeah. And you know, when I moved, I was surprised how much production there was. Orlando and the theme parks have a huge part of that production, the things mm -hmm. they do for the parks themselves. So yes, people, I think it's something outside of Florida people don't really think about for us, mm -hmm. but it's something we should definitely be proud of because it adds to the diversity of who we bring here and why they stay. Yeah. And we all know Florida is a great place to live, but you may not know that until you come for a great job like HSN, yeah. and then you become part of this community. Yeah. And, um, and something that we do here that ingratiates all of us to our local mm -hmm. market is the philanthropic piece that HSM plays such a large role yeah. in. We, um, we're so active in our community. I mean, coming from New York, you could go to an event a night and maybe it's a drop in the bucket of what anyone has to accomplish. Or Matt Damon's there raising money for water cleanliness and what am I gonna contribute? But when you come here, you realize that as someone that's grateful to have the job that I have and be treated with the respect I'm treated at work, you realize that it's so important to give back. And I would love to say I came mm -hmm. up with that art myself, but uh, our president, Bill Brand, started HSN Cares, and it really made our whole entire company a family. We do amazing events locally. We're starting our ninth house for Habitat for Humanity, built really? only by HSN employees. We have a representative on the local and national board for Habitat. Okay. I'm on the board of Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital, and that's an organization that greatly impacts our families. And it gives us a unique lens into what's happening, what kind of research they're doing for our families. It gives our families the opportunity to see experts and things that they may not even know about. So it's really something that um, you know we've always supported. Our employees get two days of community service. Oh, wow. they, we've done over 20,000 hours a year in community service. Right. It's really something and people really enjoy it. Yeah. So it's something that we're proud of, but also it's just another piece of that well-rounded part of what makes you know, being in this market where you can have that impact so important. Right. Well, so, so let's talk a little bit about the overall impact. So you, you clearly just went through a philanthropic impact that, that I don't think the average audience knows about that HSN engages in every day. Yep. Then you've got your national brand that you produce uh, that, that goes nationally. It's right here. But, but everybody in America thinks HSN is in their backyard because it's right. always on their television. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the industry as a whole and where do you see the industry going next and how is HSN adjusting its plans to, to, to continue to lead? You know, I oversee a large team at HSN. I'm very fortunate. I oversee television programming and content. It's about 500 people. And I started 12 years ago. And when I moved, I really, as someone who loves shopping and loves TV, I didn't know a lot about this business beyond what I had researched as, you know, while I was interviewing. And when I got here, I just fell in love with everything it represents. Mm -hmm. right. We are at this sort of crossroads of retail and media. We are in front of this evolution. We knew, I believe, that HSN knew and we were in front of this evolution of content production. We have huge brands come here. Yeah, because You'd be shocked at the brands that come here and are marveled by what we can accomplish. As such a small part of the puzzle, what we do is very unique and it matters because we have people that our customer trust, we have products that they love and we deliver it to them in a unique way. Well, and so right. we believe in that future. Um, I see that future as continuing to cross paths between retail and media. I think mm. it's gonna be closer to the Netflix of shopping right. than it is just shopping over here and TV over here. And we're excited to be really at the beginnings of that. It's exhausting right. <laughs> to try and move this huge right. steamship and still be respectful of that woman I referenced earlier. We never wanna disrupt our customer's experience, but it's exciting to show her new things. Yeah. We've done a lot of really unique events. We've been live from Fall Fashion Week where we bring our customer into Fall Fashion like no other channel can do, where you can buy everything you see on the runway, and there's a 360 where you can touch the audience and say, oh, there's Anna Wintour, there's mm -hmm. this celebrity. So we've been really doing groundbreaking things in our space, and we love it. We just did a really unique makeover series with Melissa McCarthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, a celebrity that, you know, people would just do anything to have on their shows. Right. We have a couple times a year in our studios. And which is another thing, you know, we spoke about on the tour, the celebrity impact, having these amazing celebrities come to our area and just fall in love with Tampa Bay is, right. is another little fringe benefit to being based here. Well, let's talk a little bit about that because that's always a bit of the fun and, yeah. and the sexiness of the business. 
but you know, the way we were talking about it is you bring the world of products via your broadcast back to the world, but really you bring all these celebrities through the Tampa Bay market, the Florida market. What, 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 who are these celebrities that you typically see and, and what do they think about the Florida marketplace and, and then their experience at HSN? Yeah, well, our celebrities that come frequently generally buy homes here because they really love it. You mentioned it earlier, great beaches, great weather, so many things to do on the weekends with your family. Right. And the ones that come once, we've had every celebrity come through HSN and they are all, for the most part, have been very nice. <laughs> and they're amazed at our <laughs> facility, and they're really amazed at just the convenience. You mm -hmm. know, even if you flew in and you didn't fly private, which many of those top celebrities do, right. we're so close to the airport. You get here, you do your job, you're right. treated with respect. It's the, I, We've received nothing but accolades. That, it, the amazing. funny part is most people don't realize they're here live, because when you have celebrities of the caliber of, you know, Sean Combs and Mariah Carey and Jennifer Lopez, you're shocked that there's not like two million people out on the like street. At the gate, waiting. They don't realize until afterwards that they're actually here live, right. and so um, until they come back a second time, and then we're usually flooded with people. But it's a really unique thing, and it's unique to see them experience this area and home, you know, this sort of retail industry through this new lens. Well, maybe we'll have to keep the, the, this celebrity stream a secret, otherwise roads will shut down in yeah. St. Petersburg and Carillon. Yeah. But uh, I, I, th I think, you know, one of the neat stories that, that we've uncovered here today is is just that. I mean, you, you are, HSN is, is really almost its economic development marketing vehicle for <laughs> Florida. Um, without really, really coming up in the general conversation. So, so I think, you know, if I'm going to share your story uh, with our viewers in, in Tallahassee and across the state who make decisions about good economic development policy, what are the top two or three things you, you, you want us to, to share with them about how HSN makes Florida a better place? Well, I certainly would not have stayed in Florida if it wasn't for HSN mm -hmm. and the dynamic work environment that it is and the amazing opportunities you're afforded in such a unique place. Mm -hmm. You know, we've covered some of the things that are most important to us here, the philanthropic piece, the local arts community. We, um, we have an amazing group of talented people that work here and care very much about this organization. I'm sure that's true of other organizations, but I've worked at many and this is truly unique in that way. We, um, in terms of the evolution of what we're doing for the retail business, mm -hmm. we are unique and we will do things that we are capable of doing things that no one else is capable of. And that's very exciting for us and I'm hopeful that as we keep moving forward and doing those groundbreaking things, it'll bring more attention to our market because yeah. we definitely know we deserve it. Right. It's now a matter of getting out there and doing it more and more. And because we've been around for so long, we're celebrating our 40th birthday this year. Oh, very good, happy you know, birthday. Thank right. you, July's gonna be a big celebration. All right. Surprise and delighting our customer every day, but what? Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is that we're here for 40 years and yet still we're a baby in certain ways, and mm -hmm. we're really reinventing ourselves. Right. And that's just you know every day is a new challenge. This is I say this with great love, the craziest place in the world to work. Right. Every day is different. Every day is unique. New people every day. It's just it's like working the casino where there's like production and celebrities all day every day. It's right. It's crazy. I mean, just walking through here and seeing the diversity of the products you're selling, the logistics that it takes to strike a set, build a new one, the creative and design. The pride, that goes right? in. When we were going through our tour, um, one of the guys that was in the middle of building a set came to show you the blueprint of the right. set. Like right. the pride people take in their work here is just astronomical. Yeah, they were and, exciting. And it's everyone from kids out of college. Most kids come to Florida and they go to college and their parents think they're going to move home to Connecticut and then we inherit them because they right. want to stay here and right. live here and it's really an honor. Well, it, it, it's an honor for us to come and, and see this amazing channel that you're at the helm of creating content. It doesn't happen alone. Obviously, you, yes. we've met your amazing <laughs> team uh, who works 24 hours a day. Just yes, watching the transition in, in the booth of teams swapping in and out, it was almost like watching, you know, uh, emergency response crews, like making sure they're always on yeah. what's going on. It's fascinating. Um, and not just one part of the business. We've got customer service right. and an amazing world-class merchandising organization. I mean... It's quite a company. Yeah, it's it's way bigger than I think anybody sees as they drive by and they see the HSN tower. Little do they know there's all this other action going on. Well, I tell you what, on, on behalf of our members, we will continue to build humongous broadband uh, networks that connect you to the world and, and likewise so that the world can connect with HSN. Thanks for your partnership. We well, appreciate thank it. Thank you. We loved having you guys.